Hi, this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about spontaneity, entropy and free energy. Today we will talk about free energy, but please refer to my previous video on spontaneous process and entropy. It's going to give you a better idea about this video. Free energy is another thermodynamic function that is described as follows. At G, which is the free energy, it's equal to the enthalpy, H, minus the temperature multiplied by entropy, S. At a constant temperature, we can say that the change on the free energy is equal to the change on the enthalpy minus the temperature multiplied by the change on the entropy. And now, if we divide by temperature both terms, we can get delta G divided by T is equal to delta H divided by T minus delta S. Now, multiplying by a negative sign, we get minus delta G over T is equal to minus delta H over T plus delta S. Now, here you should note that we are not using the subscript system or surroundings because all these functions belong to the system. So now the delta S that you see in here, this is the delta S system. And in my previous video, I have explained that minus delta H over T at constant temperature and pressure is equal to delta S surrounding. So now, if we replace the term minus delta H over T by delta S surrounding, we get minus delta G over T is equal to delta S surrounding plus delta S system. Delta S surrounding plus delta S system is equal to delta S universe. Now, of course, delta S surrounding replaced the term minus delta H over T. Having said that, this means that minus delta G over T is equal to delta S universe. Now, in my previous video, I have explained that for spontaneous process, the delta S universe always increases, which means delta S is positive. So if delta S is positive, this means delta G has to be negative. And therefore, for spontaneous processes, delta G has to be negative. So now how can we predict the sign of delta G from the sign of delta H and delta S? Now, for a negative delta H and a positive delta S, delta G will always be negative and the process will be spontaneous at any temperature. For a negative delta S and a positive delta H, delta G will always be positive, and the process will never be spontaneous at any temperature. Now, if delta H is positive and delta S is positive, the sign of delta G depends on the temperature. So delta G will be negative only at high temperatures because the negative term of delta G will be high. And therefore, the process will be spontaneous only at high temperatures. Now, if both delta H and delta S are negative, delta G will be negative only at low temperature. Now, let's consider the entropy change in chemical reactions, taking the example of making ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. We can clearly notice that the number of molecules decreases, and therefore the disorder will decrease. Fewer molecules means fewer positional configuration, and therefore lower entropy. Absolute values for many thermodynamic functions, such as enthalpy or free energy, cannot be determined. However, we can determine the absolute value of the entropy. For example, at zero Kelvin, the entropy of a perfect crystal is equal to zero. And therefore, when the temperature increases, the degree of disorder in the crystal will increase, and therefore the entropy will increase. Entropy is a state function, and therefore it could be measured by the following expression. Delta S zero reaction is equal to the sum of the entropy change in the products minus the sum of the entropy change in the reactants. Since we have mentioned that the entropy of a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin is equal to zero, so an increase in the temperature will lead to an increase in the entropy until we reach the melting point. When we reach the melting point, the entropy will increase dramatically because we're changing the state from solid to liquid. With a continuous increase of the temperature, the entropy will continue to increase until we reach 
a threshold which is the boiling point where the entropy will also increase dramatically because we're changing the state from liquid to gas. A further increase in the temperature will result in a further increase in the entropy. There are several ways of calculating the delta G0 of a reaction. Now it's important to know the delta G0 of the reaction, which means that the standard conditions of temperature and pressure, because it gives an idea about the tendency of the reaction to occur. Now consider the following example for the dissolution of the ammonium nitrate. Now, if we are given the delta H0 formation of the reactants and the products, and we are given the delta S zeros of the reactants and the products, so how can we calculate delta G0? We know that we can calculate delta H0 using the following expression and therefore in this case delta H0 will be calculated as 28.05 kilojoule. In a similar way we can calculate delta S0 and delta S0 in this case is found to be 108.7 joule per kelvin. Now replacing delta H0 and delta S0 with their values in the expression of delta G0 is equal to delta H0 minus T delta S0, we get delta G0 is equal to minus 4360 joules. Now you have to watch for the units of delta H0 and delta S0. Usually delta H0 is given in kilojoule, however delta S0 is given in joule per kelvin. Another way of calculating delta G0, it could be using Hess's law. So if we consider the overall reaction between the carbon monoxide and oxygen to give carbon dioxide, where we don't know the delta G0. However, we know that this reaction is the overall sum of two steps, which are these two reactions given in here. And we know the delta G0 of every step. Based on Hess's law, we know that the first reaction should be reversed and the second should be multiplied by 2. Now if we do so, we know that for a reversed reaction, we should reverse the sign of delta G0. And for the reaction where it's multiplied by 2, we should also multiply delta G0 by 2. And therefore, now summing these two steps, we will get the overall reaction that we have. And now we can sum the two delta G zeros, so we get delta G zero of the overall reaction is equal to minus 514 kilojoule. In a similar way to delta H zero formation of a substance, we also can calculate the delta G zero formation of a substance. Now, of course, this is the free energy of making one mole of a substance at the standard conditions of temperature and pressure. So in this case, delta G0 can be given for different substances. You have to note that delta G0 formation for elements is equal to zero. Now, since the free energy is a state function, we can also calculate it using the following expression, where delta G0 reaction is equal to the sum of the change of free energy of the product minus the sum of the change of free energy of the reactants. And in this case, replacing these terms by their values, we can calculate delta G0 reaction, which is in this case is equal to minus 2827 kilojoule. Now the unit kilojoule results from the fact that the uh, number of mole it's in mole, the delta G0 formation is in kilojoule per mole, multiplying these two terms together we get kilojoule. We can also calculate the free energy at any given conditions using the following expression. I hope this video is helpful to you, so please like, share and subscribe and I will see you next time.